everybody, it's Juliet here. Um, today we're going to be making these really pretty and very addictive earrings that I've already made. Um, this is my fourth pair. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I hadn't really come up with a name for those. Um, so because of the color of these ones, I am going to call these the Nevermore earrings. And uh, if you get the reference to that, congratulations. Um, <laughs> uh, those of you who don't, it's from uh, Wednesday, Wednesday Adams, the TV show on Netflix. She goes to Nevermore Academy. So anyway, um, I actually have only watched like two episodes, but um, it was a fun show. Anyway, I don't really watch much TV at all, to be honest. So, okay. So what we're going to be using today is we're going to be using a rectangular um, eight millimeter by six millimeter little rhinestone that's in a setting. Okay. Um, so you can get like um, Swarovski ones on um, Etsy. Um, you can also get them. I'll put a link down below. I found some at BB Craft, and I think you can also get them at Panda Hall. They are kind of hard to find. Like I, a lot of my normal shops that I shop at didn't have them, but um, I'll put um, a couple links down below for that. Or maybe you have some in your stash and you just don't know what to do with them. Well, this is going to use them up. So they do need to be in a little sew-on setting. Um, so the setting has two holes in it, okay? Um, you're also going to need some super duos. Uh, so I have the um, full Labrador here. And I have some 11 o Miyuki seed beads. And these are the number 1051. And I have some 15 o Miyuki seed beads. These are number... Um, 4220 and then I have my earring finding I have a wire guardian and I have a five millimeter jump ring just to attach to my earring finding um, you may or may not depending on how your earring finding is situated because my hole is at the front here um, but if you have one that goes front to back you won't need the jump ring okay um, I have a size 10 beading needle and I'm using today um, some dragon thread size 6 in crystal. You could also use Fireline in size 4 pound, um, so the thinnest one. But if you are, and even with the dragon thread, you may want to have like a size 11 beading needle on hand t in order to get through the... Um, wire guardian twice if you don't have a wire guardian you could just make a little loop of 15 o seed beads at the top here in place uh, when we're doing that stage just to add you know five uh 15 o's at the top okay um all right so this is a really fun earring to do so let's go ahead and get started and you will need i am using about 35 inches of thread which is about 90 centimeters. I'm going to leave a four inch tail and I'm going to pick up my little stone here and I'm going to pass through one of the holes, okay? Uh, through to the other side, you know, the holes, the sew on holes on the side and I'm just going to leave my Make sure I'm leaving enough of a tail that I can sew it in at the end. It doesn't have to be hugely long. Um, okay, so now, and make sure you've checked, uh, you know, if your super duos are coated like these ones, make sure you've checked all the holes first, okay? Um, so you're going to pick up one super duo, two 11 O's, and one super duo, okay? And we're coming out here, so I'm going to go into the other hole on the uh, stone setting, okay? So whoop, I'm coming out the bottom here, I'm going into the top. 
So, and those are just going to sit like that, okay? Um, and then we're going to repeat on this side. So we're going to pick up one super duo, two uh, 11 O's, and one super duo. And we're going to go again through the hole on the top where we started. So where our tail thread is coming out from. And just kind of keep a grip on your tail for right now. We're going to tie that in a minute, okay? So we should now have this, okay? So now we're going to pick up two 11 O's, one super duo, and two more 11 O's. We're going to go through, so I'm coming out here, I'm going to go through the setting again on, uh, so I'm coming out this side, I'm just going to enter into the other side of the setting, okay, so that's going to add a little um, loop right there. And then I'm going to pass through the four beads here. So I'm just using the same hole on the Super Duo that I originally used. I'm not going in the outer hole, I'm going in the inner hole, okay? I'm just going to pass through all four of these beads on the side. And then I'm going to pass through the setting. Okay, so I'm passing through the, the setting. Okay, and now we're going to repeat what we did down here. So we're going to pick up two 11s, one super duo, and two 11s. And we're going to go in one more time through that setting. Okay, so I'm going through the, the setting with those beads, and that will repeat what we have at the other side, okay? And then I'm going to pass through these four side beads. And now I am where my tail is where we started, where we went. Uh, so your tail's coming out of the setting. So I'm just going to tie uh, my working thread and my tail together in a square knot right now. And this will save me having to tie it in later on. Now don't pull too tight here or like what just happened to me, everything's gonna flip upwards. <laughs> um, just be a little bit gentle. Okay, you want it to still be able to lie flat. It's just really so that it doesn't come unraveled. So, okay. So once we've done that, we're ready to move on. So we have our knot and we know that we're safe. Um, I'm going to just leave my tail till the end because that's how I work. But if, you, if it's bothering you, you can... Uh, uh, cut it off if you want to. Okay, so we're going to move forward um, through the, I'm going through the setting, okay, just to get away from where my knot is. And then I am going to go through the Super Duo and the first of these two seed beads on the side, okay? So I'm coming out between the two seed beads on the side. I'm going to pick up three 15 O's. And I'm gonna go into the outer hole of the Super Duo here. And then I'm gonna pick up three more 15 O's. And I'm going to go through the second seed bead 
the bottom of the Super Duo and the second uh, seed bead on the other side. So, okay. Just like that. Then I'm going to pick up three 15 O's and I'm going to go backwards into the Super Duo up above at the top. Okay. So I'm working backwards, and then I'm going to pick up two 15 O's. I'm going to go into this bottom 15 O right here, plus the 11, the Super Duo, and the 11. Okay, so I'm going through the 15, the 11, the Super Duo, and the 11. So this 15 here is shared equally between these two sides, okay? So now I'm going to just turn. I'm going to go through the next seed bead, super duo, and seed bead. So I'm passing through the next seed bead, super duo, seed bead. And then I'm going to pick up three again. I'm going to work backwards into the Super Duo. And then again, I'm going to pick up two. And I'm going to go through the third Super Duo here at the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to go through seed bead. Sorry, third 15 0. <laughs> then I'm going through the seed bead, Super Duo, and seed bead. Too many sissisissisissis. <laughs> okay, uh, then I'm going to move forward again through seed bead, super duo, seed bead. I'm just going to repeat this all the way around, picking up three. Go backwards through the super duo. Pick up two. Go through the 15 and then seed bead, super duo, seed bead. Then pass through the seed bead, the super duo, and the seed bead again. Pick up three. Go through the Super Duo, pick up two, go through the 15, seed bead Super Duo, seed bead, and then pass through the last seed bead Super Duo, seed bead. And here we need to go up through the first 15 where we started, okay? So go up through that 15, and then we're only gonna pick up two. And we're gonna go into the other hole of the Super Duo. And we're gonna pick up two more, go through the 15, and then Seed Bead, Super Duo, Seed Bead to finish off that round. Okay, so it should now look like this. And um, so now we're going to uh, just reinforce this inner circle and connect it onto the prongs of our, um, our stone here so that it doesn't come loose. And I need to tighten that one down in a minute. Okay, so we're going to go through the 11 and the Super Duo. Okay, so you're exiting from one of the corner super duos. And you can either, sometimes you can sew through the little corner here with your needle like this. Or if it's loose enough, you can just loop your thread over. But you have to be very careful not to accidentally cut your thread while you're doing this. But this is just going to hold the whole thing um, up so more level to the stone. So this is a step we don't want to miss. Okay. 
And then we're just going to pass through the next two 11s, the bottom hole of the super duo. So we're just kind of anchoring this onto our stone right now. And then go through the next two seed beads as well. So you want to pass through all five at the top, okay? And then again, we're going to anchor ourselves on however you can do it. I'm going to sew through this time. And again, don't, don't pull so tight that it cuts your, your thread. And then I'll need to pass through the Super Duo, the two seed beads, and the Super Duo to get in position for the next um, anchoring. So where we're anchoring is um, basically before and after our two side. So we're anchoring above these two super duos and below these two super duos. So let me see if I can get that one. Oh, I don't want to cut my thread. I'm going to try and see if I can go through here. Yes. Sometimes it's a little tricky. So, you know, just persevere. And you can even take your pliers if you need to loosen the setting a little bit and then re-tighten it. That's okay, too. And I have just one more corner to do here. So I'm just going to pass through my next two. So remember, it's uh, before and after your two side ones. So right here, I mean, you can kind of see where it would be, where you need to connect. Okay, so I've just uh, connected my last prong. Uh, so I'm going to sew forward through the next Super Duo and the 11 -0. Okay. And then I'm going to sew up through this middle 15 -0. So sew outwards through that middle 15 -0. And then I'm going to move forward through the next two 15 O's. Now I'm going to pick up four of my 11 O's. And I'm going to go into the next two. So I'm coming out here. I'm going to jump over the end of the super duo and I'm going to go into the next two 15 O's. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up one 11 O and I'm going to go through, I'm skipping the middle one here. I'm going to go through the next two at the end of the next super duo. Okay. And that 11 O is just going to sit in between and kind of above this, um, 15 right here. So we have two, 11 and two. Okay. So we're going to repeat this all the way around. So we're going to add four. We're going to add four going over the top of the super duo through the next two. And then one, 11 and going through the next, the last two. 15s. And again, four. Over the top of the super duo into the first two 15s, pick up one 11, go through the next two 15s, and then pick up four. into the next two 15s. One 11. And into the next two 15s there. And then four again. Into the 
into the next two 15s. One, into the next two 15s. Four, into the next two 15s. And our last one, one, and we're going to go through the, the, so you're skipping the next 15, you're going up the last two 15s here, and then you can continue up the first two 11s. Okay, I'm struggling here. I'm going to go up through my last two 15s. Okay, and up your first two 11s of the group of four that we just added in the previous round. Okay, so now it looks like this. All right, so now we're going to add one 15 at the point of each, so in between each of the sets of four, in between two and two. Um, and then we're going to pass through the 2, the 11, and the 2. So this is a reinforcing round because um, we need to kind of fix the tension and reinforce this 11 because there's going to be beads coming off of it. So we're just going to go through the next two 11s, pass through all five, so the two 15s, the 11 that we added in the last round, the next two 15s and then up through the first two 11s at the next point pick up one and repeat so go through all of those beads up the point. So I'll go ahead and zoom through this and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm just going to add my last um, 11 onto the point here and then I'm going to pass through the two 15s and into this 11 that's in the middle here. Okay, so it should look like this, and we're coming out here where this um, 11 is. We're going to pick up three of our 15s. And we're going to sew into the second, so if you count one, two, three up to the point, we're going to sew into the second seed bead right here. And you can continue on through the point, okay? So like this. And then you have to move down into the second seed bead on the other side of the point. And then we're going to pick up three. And we're going to sew into that middle 11. And that is going to just create like this, okay? And again, here, now this one's a little different because this is where I put my hanging loop on, okay? So I'm going to pick up a three. I'm going to sew into that second seed bead, but I'm not going to go through the point. I'm just going through just the second seed bead. And then I am going to, oops, I'm going to pick up my wire guardian. Okay. And I am going to sew up through 
one side of the wire guardian and I'm going to push it down onto my piece and then I'm going to sew through the other side of the wire guardian and backwards through back towards where I was coming from. So this is the side I've been working on. I'm going back like so I'm making a loop. Okay, I'm sewing through the point. And what you want is you want that um, thread to sit in the little channel here. Okay. Then I'm going to go up the first side of the wire guardian again. And this is where you may need to switch needles if you're struggling to get through again. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go down the second side. And then I'm going to continue on into that second seed bead at the second 11 0. So uh, after the point, the first one after the point, okay? And pull. So that should now be connected on, okay? And then we're going to, um, and obviously if you were doing that with seed beads, you do the same thing. You pick up your seed beads, so backwards through. Uh, the point, so through the seed beads again, and then down into the uh, second 11 0 here. Okay, all right, so moving on, we're going to pick up three of our 15s and we're going to sew into that 11 in the middle there. Three 15s, and we're going to sew into that second bead and the point. And then you have to remember, this is the step that I always forget. You have to remember to sew down into the next seed bead before you add the next three. Okay, so just be careful of that because I can't tell you how many times I have missed that step. Okay, so three again. Then we go through our uh, little side seed bead there. We pick up three again into the second and the point. And then move into the next seed bead as well. Three again. Through that side seed bead. Three again into the second and the point. Move forward through the next seed bead. Three again. Three more into the second and the point. Move forward. and three more. And here we're going into that seed bead. Okay, so our um, design is finished. However, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you go around and re-sew through that uh, last layer that we did. So through the threes over the point, through the threes over the point all the way around because it really makes it sit not much nicer and it also helps stiffen it up um so i don't know if you can tell the difference here but it really it does pull everything together and what i like to do is while i'm doing it every now and again at one of the points i'll tie a knot so i'll go through my three i'll go up to my point and then i just sew through the little gap right here okay and I kind of make a little loop and I sew down through the loop and I just and it should just disappear right in between those two beads and then I carry on and I reinforce and then I might sew another one here and I might sew another one here once you get back to the beginning you can just um, tie off your thread and then this one remember we've already tied the knot so we just have to sew it through some beads and then we can cut it off. 
So I will uh, do all that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I went ahead and I sewed all the way around and I um, reinforced and I also tied off my threads, just like I said. Um, so now I'm gonna just attach my earring finding. So I'm just opening my jump ring, twisting it open. And first thing I like to do is make sure I can get it uh, with a nice close. So I'm just um, wiggling it and making sure that that is going to Close together nicely. Before I even start because yeah that looks good. Okay and then I'll twist it open again. So once you've twisted it open you're gonna grab your earring and uh, where the wire guardian is you're just gonna put it through and wherever the front is, make sure that the front of your earring is facing the front as well. Go ahead and slip that on. And then you can reclose by twisting closed your jump ring. And I like to give it a little wiggle just to make sure it's kind of centered there and check that it's all smooth and it is. And then I'm done. So here are my Nevermore earrings, and I just love them. I think they're really fun to make, um, and it's been a while since I've made a fun little earring like this. So uh, hopefully you can try this if you have some of these um, eight by six rectangles. Uh, it's definitely worth doing it, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you again next week for another video. Take care right now. Bye!